Thank you for coming. I know this is kind of odd topic for Java user group. It's almost like you're talking about Ruby at the Python conference. Mm -hmm. um, but um, this talk is actually kind of inspired from the fact that um, I work with a lot of people at the init stack where people have no idea what Python is, or may, they might have some, but they kind of just assuming that they, uh, this is how it works. So, uh, so basically, this is kind of like the talk that uh, try to try to imagine that uh, you need to work with Python code, but uh, you, your head is still thinking like uh, thinking Java, like the way you're thinking about like if you speak multiple languages. You know, like sometimes you think about in one language, but you have to speak in another language. So this is kind of the idea of like you're bilingual people, right? So like, uh, so how do you, how how do you think how how do you still keep thinking about something in Java but uh, work with Python code? So um, I already did my introduction, so I will skip that the boring part. So I will start off with the uh, with the um, the the most boring part is that how am I getting start on running something so uh, in Java right so uh, so basically you start off with like oh, don't worry about the, the code if you don't be, uh, if you cannot read it it's just the static y main function so that's kind of boring part and if you use Java uh, 21 uh, you have a good, better life so it's kind of less character that you have to type but uh, when you when when it's come to Python uh, you will see that um, Python is technically just a script, right? So you see that um, you can just basically just hello world with just like uh, just a, a print command or do whatever you want without anything. But when you see in the second block here, where um, I really want to kind of go up there and do it. All right, fine. All right. Uh, if I block something, sorry about that. So you see that the the second script is look a little bit well, and not a little bit. It's much longer. But you see that I have the main function. And then at the bottom here, if you cannot read it, I'm sorry about that. But uh, it's have the if statement to check for like if the name is uh, main. The thing is, every time when a Python uh, when when you say Python uh, running the something dot pi, um, the the uh, in the code the first the the, uh, the main module is actually will be named like underscore underscore main, no matter what the f the, the name of the file is. And why am I doing this instead of doing that? That looks much simpler and also less things to type. The reason for that is that suppose that if this part is um, something like um, some kind of library, you kind of write something you want to check like this can be like this have like a shareable function or variable or something like that. But at some point you feel like maybe I should be able to run the script directly. And this is how you can do that. Where, uh, where if you have the other script that try to like you know borrow some part some of this function, you still can do that without actually trigger the main function. So this is kind of one way to avoid the uh, trigger the main function. So now from zero to one, any question? No. And just to tell you, just so you know that there's another way that you can run too, but I will skip that part because it's uh, it's kind of start kind of deviating from from Java. So just you know. Try to keep it simple. So the next one uh, is the quick comparison, right? So um, as you probably see from the previous code, that um, uh, Java used curly bracket for all the block, and Python just used indentation. If that drive you crazy, uh, just live with it. There's no way. Uh, there's nothing you can do with that any, at this point. No. Another thing that I kind of see this as more like a common problem that uh, when you when you write Java a lot, like uh, say when you have like uh, the while statement, the if, the for loop. Uh, definitely, you cannot just go without the, the the bracket, right? In Python, you don't need any of that. You can have it if it's make you feel comfortable about like writing code, but in theory, you don't need that at, that at all. So, um, so yeah, that's a um, that's a kind of the quick comparison for the boring stuff. Pr uh, primitive type um, in so like you see, this is kind of boring. But one thing that you need to know, uh, you may need to be careful with that integer is basically it's have the same range at, as a long type. And so as the the float also the same thing. It's go to maximum like as much as the um, I think it's like a, like if the CPU is sixty four bit, it's that's kind of as far as the it it was uh, like the, the range of the the, the number. Um, actually, I I kind of put this as the last item on on the screen, but technically Python doesn't have any array. If you kind of uh, kind of uh, a big fan of Python, I know that not everyone here is uh, basically you see that no documentation ever talk about uh, array in Python. 
and it's always talking it will e either like a, a tuple or a list which is like when you look at the um, the Java here, right? So on the left here, it's, uh, it's a list in, in Java. Uh, on the right side here, it's basically, it's a, it's a Python version of it, but uh, you see that the, there are two, two types of it. One is the list and one is tuple. Tuple is more like a, a, the immutable version of list that you can't like, you cannot like uh, change the order. You cannot remove any item. You cannot append anymore, but it's acting like when you iterate, it's, it will be the same way. Um, the uh, the difference when you kind of write code is also a slight difference where uh, if you don't use like the constructor, um, people probably don't usually use that. But you see that if I go with the list, you will see like a square bracket at the at the beginning and the end. And if I have one item, it will look like this, right? But uh, if it's come as a tuple, uh, it will use the just a number bracket. And uh, but the when it's come to when it's come to like one item, you, uh, the tuple of one item need to have like a telling comma. Otherwise, it would just a, just a normal verb like value. Yes, if anyone ever make that mistake, uh, please you know, yes, yeah, it's a common one. Uh, and another common one is that uh, in I didn't I didn't write this down, but because when I, when I thought about this like about like uh, maybe two hours later after I make this, I was like, hmm. I totally forgot the fact that if you write a statement in Python and say like uh, without the bracket like this, it's also become automatically tuple. If that drive you, oh, and also the same thing with the one, like here, that's also become a tuple too. So if that drive you crazy, sorry about that, I'm not the one who invented, but please live with it. Um, the next one is a map, right? So uh, when, when you write Java code, you deal with a lot of map, uh, like the map, hash map, uh, and hash table, any kind of stuff. Uh, Python have at least dictionary. There's like the order dictionary and that kind of stuff. That's something if you if you have way too much time, please go and read the documentation. But I would just keep at the dictionary level. So there are two ways you can like uh, present the the uh, dictionary object. One is kind of looks similar to the um, to the uh, JSON uh, JSON op like uh, like object. So you see something like this. That's kind of look like uh, the JSON. With the exception that uh, all the keys are basically can be anything that is not string two. For example, I can add a number. That JSON doesn't allow you to do that. It can and technically any kind of hashable object, the byte array, the even like an object that have like the hash function, as long as uh, is uh, the the dictionary can guarantee the uni uniqueness, you can use it. Like in the code that we write at the DNA stack, this also have a lot of like object as a key to because I'm too lazy so I'm just kind of do that do something like that but uh, another way you can do it and if this is something like say the key you know that the key is will be string but the value can do be something else this would be another way that you can write now uh, that's a constructor for the dictionary that will automatically say uh, say that it's a dictionary of string to something um, now uh, I if you wonder why I have the set here, we also have set in Python. The only problem with set is that when you kind of write, uh, you, there's a constructor, but when you write more like the short form, um, it look almost identical to dictionary. So if anyone anyone make a mistake, like uh, you know, write uh, write uh, like one two three like this, and thought it would be an array uh, like in Java, no, it's not. And uh, if it, it drives you nuts, I'm sorry about that. But technically, this is a this is a set object. Uh, you can do intersect. You can do everything. It uh, may or may not guarantee like order, unlike the list. But you know, and also the presentation is re is really like um, like kind of close to the dictionary, so it's really confusing if you read the code. Um, yeah, in and it, the difference between Python and Java. I know that some people like uh, when when you write something like uh, a array or list in in uh, in in Java. Um, uh, we we kind of we always make sure that the last item in, in the array never have the telling comma, otherwise it will kind of cause the compile co uh, compilation error. Uh, Python doesn't actually worry too that much. It's basically treat the the telling comma as nothing. So instead of so when you kind of have the telling comma like one two three and telling comma, it's the same thing as just one two three without the telling comma. So that's kind of the kind of more like the language feature. Uh, it doesn't look that useful when you kind of see in one line, but when you have like uh, the 
like when you have to declare an array of like 20 items and you have to kind of split into like 20 li 22 lines uh, and later on when you do have a code change you have to code do the code review it will be really like useful because you only see the change right so yeah so uh, that's the this is kind of take way too long for something boring so I'm gonna move on <laughs> sorry so um, uh, now the byte and string, uh, luckily that you are in the era where uh, Python 2 point something is no longer exists. Uh, if you don't know about what I'm talking, long story short, uh, Python 2 points up to 2.7 have normal string, Unicode string, and byte array. And they're not fun to kind of when you try to work with any of this. It's sometimes it's automatically become Unicode and so on, so I'm not going to talk about that, but so um, the so what you see on the left here, you all know that how you kind of convert from just uh, a string to just a byte array and if you kind of need to do back backward. This is also like just three lines that you can do in Java. Uh, in Python, it's just, it's kind of use the, uh, the method in code. This is kind of the method only in the string object and to like convert any string into a byte array. The only stupid thing about Python is that the uh, the byte array is not like representing like uh, the uh, in Java where it's actually like a byte and, and like have an array uh, notation. This one just kind of the more like an object, like it's more like a collection of byte. So uh, and but this this one also provide you the the the, uh, the the decode method where you can actually decode the byte array into a string. So it might break your brain a little bit if you're kind of coming from Java and it's like how am I going to like switch between like kind of converting like, like interchange, interchanging between the byte array and the string it's just a different terminology but uh, it's also kind of pretty simple like you can do, do that almost like one to one this is a problem where uh, the, uh, you will see that these um, Python is uh, it's the dynamic type language so sometimes it can screw with you in terms of like say um, like this code is basically run the shell command of like who I am um, by default, if you don't say anything, it's returned as a byte array. If you pass that uh, that argument, it actually will give you the string instead. Uh, how do you know which one? Unless you actually read the documentation or go to the Python sort code and try to figure that out. Uh, yeah, it's gonna drive you nuts. Um, so, like this is more this normally not common when you kind of deal with the web application or like data science thing. But if you deal with like these DevOps script or something like that. This is something that you probably gonna run into that a lot. Like, so uh, variable scope. Uh, I'm sorry about the text. Uh, I totally missed this uh, this particular screen. I will try to explain my best. But um, so uh, in Java, correct me if I'm wrong. I uh, but uh, the. Um, the variable scope is actually per block. So if you kind of declare, like, if you, you cannot read it, I'm sorry about this, but you, uh, like inside the if, state, if block, if you declare some variable, it's also local to that block, right? And uh, so in this example that you cannot read, it's basically like a function, uh, an example of function that add just two number, that only positive number. So, uh, and the way I write it is uh, probably the most stupid way possible. So I have like the variable declare up front and then just kind of just either add up or set to minus one when you know uh, you know uh, and then just return the variable um, so this kind of look pretty common in Java now if I switch to Python uh, the annoying thing is that in Python the, the scope of variable is actually the, the the smallest one is actually at the scope of the metro the metro block here so that would mean that even if I don't say uh, like I don't uh, like initialize or declare the variable up front, but at any point if I actually declare a, a variable in the in any block within with, within the metro, then at the end I can access to to that variable too. And this is kind of uh, where this is going to cause a lot of, a lot of error and also like uh, agony, crying, and all the kind and screaming because uh, in in like for example in your case, is this possible that someone like say hey I totally forgot to the else. So it's only declared in the if, and if it's not, you know, like f uh, meet the condition, what happened, right? So it will be like, oh, you try to access to a variable that is not assigned. So it's a common error. It's really stupid, but it seems to be working like this, and they never change it. So 
you know, so that's kind of cute. So, so it's, that's why, you, you know, like, uh, this is why I'm kind of, like, uh, you know, like, um, thinking, like, uh, like from, the ja from someone who worked with Java and probably see in the past, too, that is this, when I found out about this, like, probably three years ago, I, this, this really, like, drive me crazy, too. So, sorry about random. <laughs> I'm not supposed to rant about the, uh, about Python. Anyway, so back to this one. So, um, so this is the generic type. Um, so, uh, if you kind of read the Java code, it's a, it's a boring code. Basically, like, we all know how generic type declare and work and that kind of stuff. In Python, uh, until 3.11, they don't make anything simple uh, at all. So, you see that first of all, you have to like uh, declare the type var. Don't ask me why I have to like specify p twice. Uh, I read the documentation and still don't get that. Um, but and then the annoying thing is that unlike the, in Java, where you can actually just say you like use the uh, the angle bracket kind and just have like the and the t here to kind of say that this is a type for for this that uh, will be used uh, with full. This one I have to actually inherit from generic and also specify what type of actually like you know the the, the type y that i i specified in the f in in the line earlier but then after i did all of that everything else is pretty much the same you uh you see that it's almost one to one where the i just kind of say the t uh type type of the t variable at t argument is the uh it's a generic type in 3.11 if you're actually adventurous enough to install 3.11 um Maybe you should too, but basically it will just simplify your life a, uh, a lot better because you don't have to do any of that. You just kind of do the same thing as what you can do in Java, and you're done. So that's kind of the, like when you think when you kind of uh, you like w I kind of I, I believe I can do this the, the I can like um, implement like a, kind of a generic type in Java, but I want to do the same thing in Python, and I don't know how to do it. This is kind of how you can do it. Um, and so now, once you kind of get through all of that uh, thing, now the uh, let's nitpicky about the ternary uh, uh, operator and the list comp uh, uh, comprehension. The uh, the uh, the ternary uh, operator is pretty simple in ja in Java. Like uh, you know how to do it anyway. But in when when you kind of look at the condition and the true and, and and the value when it's true and value is when it's false. When you switch to Python, it will be like the value when it's true, and the condition that you're actually checking before you can actually can and before you can define the default value. Um, um, people kind of use this a lot, uh, but there are also another way that the people also use a lot is like uh, the um, something like if this not defined or something that's also do like more like a shortcut for something like say empty string. Uh, the null op, the null value, or something like that. So they have something like this. And now for the list comprehension, um, if you cannot read this code, uh, just let's say that uh, I have I declare a list, uh, go into the stream uh, API, and just do the multiply two, and then the next one uh, just basically just exclude everything that is negative. So you see that the in Java code, this is kind of how I, how 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 we can do that in uh, with list. Uh, with the stream API, on the Python side, um, you can do with the f with just a normal for loop. That's also that's also fine. Nobody will stop you from not doing uh, from doing that. But uh, there's a uh, the list comprehension here that um, that uh, it looks like I'm actually declaring uh, an, uh, a list. But uh, technically, what is inside is basically is have the false statement here. That basically like a more like a uh, kind of like an iterator is uh, to generate the list. Um, so, what you can do in in this uh, in, in this comprehension is a you can actually do something like similar to the mapping here. So you can manipulate the data that you're gonna show up the, into the uh, into the list at, uh, as a result, or you can also like uh, def define a condition. So it's more like a filter operation. And uh, if anyone wonder why Python sometimes like uh, Python developer use that in instead of um, do the for use the for loop. For there are two reasons. One is uh, this particular uh, syntax is uh, is optimized, so it's a lot fa it's it's uh, faster than the the normal for loop. But the second thing is uh, for simplicity. So if you just kind of do something simple like that, I can just basically have one liner to do, to to kind of basically map, uh, like do something like a mapping operation here, 
so it's kind of pretty kind of make it simple um, but if it is actually easier to read it's up it's you know it depends on the uh, preference right so that's so now before I move on from this one even though I kind of have the sliders for the list comprehension but this partic particular syntax also work with uh, set and the dictionary that you see earlier. Uh, I never tried with tuple, so I'm not going to kind of claim that it's work. But um, but yeah, just so you know that if you see a similar syntax but have the curly bracket, uh, you that's kind of that's either like work uh, like kind of is to do the dictionary comprehension or the set comprehension. Yeah, so that's kind of the um, the you know it's kind of more like a language feature. And uh, you might see a lot of people overuse it, so you see like nested like comprehension. So if you see that, uh, just complain, but I, don't, I cannot help you with that. So um, private, protected, and public. Um, in Python, technically, there are only two, 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 uh, two, uh, two, access, uh, two types of accessibility. One is just public, and one is private. There's no such thing as protected. <laughs> By default, everything is public, uh, and the only way that the, the interpreter will know that this is private is when you have to underscore in front of it, and not after the and not like after the name of the reference. That's kind of how it uh, is uh, uh, understand whether this is actually private or public. They say uh, the uh, urban uh, legend like to believe you know like for, uh, that everyone believes that you know like have one magic underscore and then that would be protected. Uh, your IDE will actually help you with that, but the actual, but uh, but the code, but you still can access to that one. So it's still public. Well, it's, it it is public because it only have one underscore. So so it's more like a convention rather than the actual something that uh, like uh, what interpreter actually will enforce. Um, setter and getter. Um, I will start off with something boring. This is kind of what how we actually implement getter in Java, right? If I'm gonna do the same thing to, uh, in Python, this is kind of how I do it. Um, so, in Python, the, uh, each class, uh, like uh, any cl any class, basically have uh, actually uh, like a, in, in Java. Let's correct me if I'm wrong, but each each of like say like pri uh, private int or something that's kind of uh, defined as a as an attribute, right? But in Python, like uh, X or something like that, that's actually uh, defined as the as a property. So norm normally, you uh, you see this convention where I have a value, like some class actually, like say you can get like the uh, a, uh, like like in this example, like f dot x. That's kind of make it look like I access directly to to the class property. But what happened is that I actually access through a function, to a, to a class method. But the reason it actually looked like uh, just a normal property because there's a property uh, annotation here that basically tell the tell tell the interpreter that uh, when you do, when you access to this, you can just like say like uh, this is like a no, like access like a normal property. And in this code, basically say that uh, I I start with x is a private, and then uh, next and the next line here say I now I want to kind of. Um, uh, set up like a, uh, a like a getter for for the x uh, property, and uh, the next line here, which is a setter, this is will upset a lot of people. By the way, um, pun intended, uh, is that the uh, in Java you kind of say like something like set x, and then you know like the the the, the value or something. In Python, um, what happened is that once you kind of say uh, once you, if you want to set the De de define the setter for, for, for the x property. You kind of have, instead of use the add property, you kind of have to use the uh, add with the name of the property that you want to make as a setter for that thing, and then dot setter. Um, it's annoying. <laughs> Somehow the language actually like kind of make, make something like this. Um, so the question would be that, so when you see like the whole code here, the last one would be like a get x too. That's kind of you know just replicate the, the Java code that I showed you earlier. But to tell you the truth, nobody using that doing this um, unless they don't know about the property. And uh, using the code below, if you don't have enough angle to see the code, sorry about this. But um, it will have like we we kind of start off with like uh, the f four, and at this point, this is kind of the way to access the property, which is look like you access. Any normal property, but this one is more like a property that access through a through a method. And then when I say uh, f dot x equal to something, that's actually we call the setter. 
So, in so why am I actually show you all of this? So let's say that if you have like a Python class that want to, let's say like you want to, um, you want to allow the, the outside code to be able to access to a certain property, but don't want it to actually just reset the, that property. Just, just don't, you don't need to actually like uh, define this setter. And that's expect effectively the same thing as you just define a getter, right? So uh, for like a private, for a private attribute. And yeah, that's, so this is kind of the getter and setter. If anyone read about Python before, so you know that uh, Python is that type, uh, right? So quack quack. Um, I can show you um, the first one that I'm, I would like to show you how this. So, the, so in Python, basically, like if uh, first of all, does uh, anyone know what the duct type is? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Well, I will try to explain this as quickly as possible. So, thinking of, say. Um, you have uh, a class. Uh, it's like like in so in Java, basically, when you try to do s when when if let's say if you want to pass uh, an object to a function, and then inside a function, this object will actually try to call some method. It's it's need to call it need to be able to, it need to have that method to, to and and with like this expected signature. So uh, normally, when we do that in Java, you just define like uh, something like interface. I, there might be a, many ways that you can do it, but one way you can do it is just define interface. No matter what type of the class is, but as long as it's implementing this interface, it w uh, like the code inside will 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 actually uh, will be able to uh, like will have enough confidence to call that method and keep go keep running, right? So that's kind of what what we what we do in Java. In Python, uh, we don't have there, there's no such thing as interface. You probably already seen that. I never mentioned about interface once. Uh, so, uh, but so in Python, uh, because it's never have like types restriction or anything like that so the, the way that work is more like if you try to call uh, in, in some operation where you don't even know that it's actually try to check for the type uh, like for example when you um, actually let's start with example so um, does anyone understand I know what the callable type call, like callable object in Python call, uh, callable. Callable. callable so you know you know you don't know okay so basically everything in so any function method is all is actually classified as a uh, callable function. Technically, it means that it can act as a function, right? So, um, so that would mean that the lambda function, the normal function, a met like class met like opt like instant method, anything like that, that's all callable op object. So, like even in this example, when you like, like. Um, like these are these are these are technically it's a callable object, and so is this. So that's why it's so that's why when 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 I mention about like um, if you if you don't have if I don't have this decorator, it's basically this this X will be overwritten by this one, because it's basically say okay I de I define like a, a a callable object with this uh, and then I, I define it again so it's overwritten the what I had it before. So, um, but. Um, in Python, because everything is object, so you can like including like the function, right? So you can actually make a function that actually act look act like a fun like a, sorry, you can make an object that act like a function, and this is kind of what it's look like. So so I start off with the lambda function that do basically just like the multi multiply by two. I have a function, a boring function that do the same thing, but these two are basically callable object. Now you will see that the next one, I say I have like the callable object uh, one, and I do the same thing by just. But first of all, I, I instantiate an, an, an object as a co underscore one, and then I just kind of do the same thing. Like just say like co one and then bracket and and keep the number. So technically, it's acting like a function. So uh, how how did that work? Is that in Python? When it see the reference, and when it's when I when I make that expression, it will try to check if uh, it's a is callable either because it's like a lambda or a function, or b is the op is a reference have the uh, the call method implement. So in this case, I don't like we don't know, we don't care about the the other method, but as long as I have a call here, it's now it's become now it can can act like a function. So. This is kind of a one. This is kind of one example of the duct type. Like, like uh, the like the, in this case, we're not checking anything. That interpreter actually asked, like looking for it, 
looking to see if I implement this method. So, like um, uh, the so the next example is also something that uh, we I think this this example is a bit rare, but the but the next one is be something that uh, you you will see a little bit more often, hopefully, if you have to deal with Python code uh, iterator. <coughs> so. Let's start off with something like I, de I, de I define a list of number, like let's say one to four, because I'm too lazy to go more than that. Um, and then this one is I what what I did is basically say print everything, and uh, instead of just go with the normal for loop that I show you uh, before, uh, in like when I talk about the list uh, comprehension, this one I basically ask the interpreter to say just just go uh, just get the it just get the uh, in, like iterator of this list. Instead of actually let the f let the language do uh, do that, uh, um, so that's w so this is kind of work like a like uh, like a normal like a list comprehension. So the next one here, this is a so I implement something like a the uh, a custom iterator, but as you see that I'm not actually uh, like there's no like um, the subclass or inter block or anything that indicate this is an iterator, but. Uh, the and then you see at the bottom. I'm sorry, but the size of the font. You, know, um, I already kind of just say instantiate this object, and I pass on the the list of the uh, uh, the the number that I, I I have earlier. What happened here is that in Python, what ha uh, if I even if I do this, it will actually see. Okay, do I have the do I have the iter uh, method implement? And because this, uh, you can have like a different thing, but in this case, I, I make it simple. So this class act like as a uh, act as a iterator. And once I kind of have the iterator, the next thing that the iterator will uh, need to have is the next uh, method here. So because so this is more like everything that kind of uh, the the interpreter asks without like like from 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 the simple code like that internally, it's actually asking for this method and. And instead of like say, okay, uh, is this an iterator class or something like that? Nope, it's actually just see if the class can do something. So this is kind of uh, uh, duck typing. I'm pretty sure this is probably like the last few things now. So annotation and decorator. Uh, I I told you that I'm gonna talk about this. So uh, in Java, we call everything with the add and then something like on top of the either the class, the method, or variable as uh, annotation. And uh, I still don't know the origin of this, but Python actually call it decorator. Um, and the way that it, uh, the way that how 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 things is being used or applied is also slightly different. Uh, but like uh, so, for example, this is like an example in Java code. I am pretty sure nobody have problem with reading this. Uh, but this is more like say I I de I define like a note uh, annotation to uh, to just kind of just just make a comment of the class or something because I don't know how the doc string work uh, and the the way that I can access to that comment is like in the node it's basically just um, use the just kind of get the annotation and extract the information of the of the uh, the class or whatever I actually need to get right so this is kind of how I get it working in Java I, anyone ready for the Python version the, Okay, so um, one <laughs> one person is enough for, for this. So, uh, so this is a Python version. Um, anyone understand what this what's going on here? Because short answer is, if you don't understand, if you don't really like, you, if you never implement a decor, like a decorator in Python before, this is really confusing as hell. <laughs> because like the function has to match the name of the annotation. Is that what's going on? No. Technically, the dec a decorator is a function okay. that you can actually use the add the, the add annotation to like uh, to kind of like, uh, like like in the syntax. But uh, I, I will go with I will go with what I s what I present here first, and then before I talk a little bit further. So how this is actually implemented is is because uh, this is ex ex an example where the uh, a decorator uh, can take parameter, and it's required to have a, a bracket. If you see some code, like like in the previous code, have like the property without the bracket, uh, uh, that's kind of require a different d different pattern on how you implement the the uh, the decorator. But what happened here is that when you say add something like this, um, the parameter that you take here is actually like uh, is corresponding to the f to the first layer here, 
and then it's actually apply and then the this one we actually apply to the to the class but because it's all like accessible from all, from the top all the way to the to to the bottom of the 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 the, 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 the nested layer so that's kind of um you know that so this is kind of like the um an example of how you implement like from the from what you see in Py uh, java how to make it identical in python but the only problem with the python uh, annotation is you can certainly make it look like something in in uh, what you see in java where you have to actually go and get the reference of the class or the method to get the the information about annotation but most of the time what you see how this is actually being used is more like uh, just add like a new method, add a new class, or change the whole thing. Uh, more like, or maybe like uh, just kind of add a wrapper on top of what is actually being uh, kind of decorated on or annotated on. So it's n so which I think Java annotation like Lombok can do the same thing. But um, this is more like a common case that uh, being used in in Python where annotation is more like um, uh, some something to enhance the functionality. So I know this one is confusing, but this is more like just to give you the idea that it's a two different things. Be careful. It's not the same. <laughs> um, the last one uh, is, uh, oh, actually not the last one. This is the last two, but I will try to go with this quickly. Uh, optional. Anyone know what optional is before you start reading this? OK. Um, so anyone who doesn't know about optional, in, let's say in Java, when you say optional something, is basically you are dealing with the optional object, right? Optional object of something. In Python, the optional is actually is a, is a short form for, uh, for, uh, for, the uh, for the type hint that tell you that that reference is either a type of what you're actually telling it is, or it's just knowable. Technically, it says that this either this one or you can set the null op, uh, null value, and it's and the and the editor will not complain about that. So, what happened here is that the um, some a lot of people make a mistake by saying something like, for example, I I say f I declare like a, a function called foo and say argument one optional int and say nothing, right? So your 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 worst instinct would say, hey, I can call now. I can call just foo without passing any argument, right? Yep, that you run into an error right away, because that just kind of say that I'm accepting null uh, uh, for uh, for for the argument one, or you can just pass int, but you still have to pass it. <laughs> so how how do I, how do you avoid that uh, type of problem, right? So um, you have to like in Python, this doesn't matter either because it's just type hint when you unless you use uh, my pi. That's uh, uh, what he mentioned earlier. That's will enforce it. But uh, but uh, in interpreter, it, this doesn't matter. What matter for the interpreter? That's not going to give you uh, an error when you when you just call for without any parameter. It's when you actually have to define the default uh, uh, the default value. That's what matter. For, that's kind of what matter for the interpreter. So this is kind of the common mistake that people kind of think like how like what the like how the language like this how this work. But it technically doesn't mean much. Just you know, just be careful about this. <laughs> uh, accidental static variable. Um, I'm sorry about the front side too, uh, because this one is long. So um, imagine that I have the counter class that, uh, if you cannot read it, imagine it's the atomic integer. Uh, that already have one function add and get uh, the value out. Uh, I have two function basically. Every time I call it, I keep increasing the counter, which is the, uh, the in an, uh, an instance of this class. The only difference between these two is that a uh, one. The, uh, the default value for the counter is basically set to none. And every time when the function is being called, it will see whether if it's not being passed in, uh, into the function, then I will just instantiate a new one. Whereas uh, the, B, the, 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 the second one basically just simplified by saying, hey, just instantiate the, the, uh, the counter as a default value, then you just live with it, right? And then it just kind of run into like uh, five, five different times for each function. Uh, anyone want to guess what would happen? Okay, for the interest of time, I think we have four minutes left. I will just spoil you the, the, the fun. Um, what happened here is, um, the, uh, in Python, when, uh, when, the, when, the, when you define something like an object, anything that you can pass by reference, uh, uh, and, and then you set as a default value, uh, is we do some code optimization. So this actually now in the global space. 
So every time when you call this function, because this is already like declared once and never actually re never re instantiate again. So that would mean that every time when you call the the, the second function, it's keep like it's keep using the same object over and over and over. So that's why you see that this part is also one 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 and this one one two three four five. Um, you might not see this a lot because most of the time we will kind of go with like a, the primitive type or something like that. But if and even though string is the uh, is is an object, but it's still like um, it's still like you know read only, right? So you might not get that a lot. But if you add something like a list, like empty list as a default value, enjoy. <laughs> I ran to that once. Um, the last I tried to go. Uh, okay, I think I may have to skip. A few things, right? You got three minutes. Oh, jeez. Okay. So uh, this one, uh, I'll go quickly. So uh, virtual thread and uh, async I/O. So everyone probably know virtual thread already, right? Uh, so um, async I/O is basically the same thing. So um, so it's designed for like the uh, not long, uh, like uh, not for long running C uh, CPU intensive tasks, and uh, for but and it's designed for the I/O bound operation. So Technically, that means that you can just block and then just yield the, t uh, the, the CPU to, to like the other task and, and make, make it more lightweight and can use it in like, uh, something that's much more like uh, the something that requires like, high throughput. Uh, uh, virtual thread actually just kind of make it still look like you're working with a normal thread. But uh, for the async I.O., basically it's kind of relying on the async of it. Uh, there's a love and hate relationship, depends on who, which cam you're on, but I'm not particularly a big fan of this. Uh, and I'm sorry, I couldn't enlarge this in time, but the difference here, you see that this one is just like a normal thread, ooh, um, here, right? You just need to kind of say off virtual and then, and you still run everything like a normal like thread object. On this side, um, basically you have no idea that uh, you're already like doing something similar with the virtual thread uh, until like, but you see that there's like a blocker or something like that. So it's kind of, it's a different syntax. But generally, it's the same concept. It's like uh, it's uh, like the whole thing. The whole thing that you see in that code is basically run in event loop. So it's kind of like, um, so it's much so it does, doesn't use like the the, the operating thread or the platform thread. <laughs> but yeah. So um, the last one. Sorry, I'm kind of rushing now. Uh, the last one is the exception. Um, anyone work with Java probably know that if you just kind of say throw an exception without like the cost. Set, setting the cost, you just get the stack trace just for one, just for that uh, exception, and right in Python, uh, by default, it's basically just give you everything. But when you try to kind of get the cost of the exception, if you like, uh, there are two ways of doing it. So, if you throw an exception with, without telling the cost, uh, it still shows an exception of what it what it might be the cost. But uh, when you try but in the code, when you try to re try to get it, you can't get it. The other way around is that when you kind of say uh, throw an exception from uh, another exception, that would mean that you now specify the say which one is which which one is the cause of this exception. And uh, when you kind of read the 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 stack trace, it's also it it will say something different. So, for example, if don't specify the cause, even though it's give me it's show me the stack trace of the what could be a probable cause. It would just say that uh, during handling of this above up, uh, exception, another up, uh, exception occur. The other one would say above above exception was uh, the direct cause of the following exception. So you see. So first of all, there's a clue in the text in the, in the message here that tell you whether you can actually retrieve something from from the exception uh, object or or not. Depends on how it's actually being thrown. And that's it for the presentation. If you have any more question, I can actually like answer. Like uh, here, you know.